it is officially just winning territory. Yep. And everybody can see it. And I think that Jan might know it because if your queen is on h6, you've got nothing going on for you here. Yep. The white king is marching up the board already at h4. Maybe we'll keep going. And those pawns, what are you going to do about those pawns? Yep. I I'm not going to do nothing about the pawns. They're not my pawns, Robert. And let's say queen to g6 or queen to h7. Uh, he played queen h7, so, and it's going to be similar. Okay. I want to try queen h7, rook to g5, because I want to get that rook to g7 oh. to fully oh, cut wow. off the and black then king. You're but rook g8 check is a threat, too. Rook to g8 oh is an immediate God. threat, but let's say the queen goes back to b1. Okay. Rook to g7. Maybe it's it's not good to cut that king off. Yeah, actually, this puts us back in a weird drawing territory because the queen is in a more it feels like uh, open board. Why, yeah, I already messed it up, and and possibly. Well, this is just so hard, but it's so obviously we're gonna seven. we're gonna be diving into all of this. Just Can remind he play king everybody. King to g five. King it's, to g five now. It's not on the board yet, though. Right, but king. But wait, where's he do so? Queen g eight checking or king, king to h six? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then fully invade with with rook f six, f five, e six. The king on h six. Can only yeah, be checked from h8, king g6, no, then queen g8, knight g7, king to e7, e6, no. rook f7, and this it's over. Just, this is just yeah, ready. Yeah, pawns go. And there's been no checks. You've blocked, blocked them all. So queen h7 played. King g5. So, yeah, you don't want to let the queen go back to b1. We were talking about that yeah. earlier at the yeah. moment when mm -hmm. Jan only had those move, two moves that drew. So, wait, the queen takes f5 is not a threat, by the way. White can maybe play e6. e6. Exactly what I was thinking. Queen e6. of five is not a threat. Because of knight g7. Because of knight g7 check. So e6. With the threat of rook f7. The threat of rook f7. And you can't ever take this pawn e6 anyway with queen e7 check. Like, you're not taking this pawn. That can't be captured, right? But also, queen e7, rook f6. Yep. And you're frozen. Secure. The, yeah, like king, king g4 might also be very good. King to g4 because that pawn is immune, as Robert mentioned. But I like king g5 most. That... Uh, I, to me, that feels like... That, that looked like an e6. He played e6. Yeah, that looked like an e6. Okay, he's played e6. The queen cannot capture the rook because of the fork on g7. The moves available to black are becoming less and less. The moment that queen came to the short side of the board, if you will, she cut off her opportunities and put black in a technically losing endgame. No judgments. This was almost impossible to hold regardless, which is why... We've seen Carl. Danny, one tactic I want to say. If yeah. black plays queen g6 here, for example, a yeah. passing move, I like the move rook to f7. <laughs> now, that is threatening knight f6 e7. And if black takes on e6, knight g7, king f7, knight e6, king e6, you king to g5, king, king f7, king f5, this is an Know your king and pawn endings, kids. It's a winning, winning endgame for white. Wow. I mean, it, it was an immensely difficult task for Jan. We've been saying that for a long time now, where it seemed like Mag was pushing, pushing, waiting, finding his moments. And this is a lost position for Jan Yep. And what you're saying, Danny, is so important, that when the queen is close to a knight, what yep. uh, my coach and Fabiano's coach taught us at a young age, is knights are amazing defenders. Because it, let's say the queen was on h6, like even if the rook weren't over there, you don't have a single check. Yep. Because the knight covers f6, it covers f4, and it's blocking the h file. Yep. So knights are amazing at restricting the queen, and that's why the queen needed to be on b1, on c2, yep. all the way on this side of the board to give checks so the knight couldn't block. But now it's way too late for that. The king is coming up, the pawn, the rook, everything is working harmoniously. And Yonapamshi, he knows he's lost now. Yep. It's one of those really instructive, just the, the geometry lesson that is a chessboard when you see a knight dominate a queen in close proximity because the queen as powerful as she is, has no access to these long diagonals, the things that she normally does to flex muscles on both sides of the board. Oh, this queen g6, rook f7, rook is, f7 is winning on the spot now. Rook f7 threatens knight f6, and queen again- Queen f6 is losing, this, we mentioned that. The king and pawn ending we've already talked about. If queen takes Wait. g6, you fork. We just saw the bar go wild there. Maybe rook f7, queen to h6 is What's possible. The move? Oh, if, no. no. So, why is this? I don't know this no, Eval Bard. It, it, no, it, it, I think there. Eval Bard just, I think it was just taking a second to evaluate. No, this is still winning. What, what sometimes happens is it sees, you know, lines, right, but doesn't go deep enough. Right. And so it may think that king and pawn game doesn't see him as such as winning. Of course it is. No. But rook f7, we use our human intuition here and. Take a yeah. breath, boys and girls. You're about to there see. There it is. The, you're about to see the first decisive result 
in more than five years in classical chess of the World Chess Championship. I expect Yanda Pomnishi to throw in the towel in this position. I really do. Yeah. And I think we will, uh, we will have we will have blood from Dubai, as they say. We will have our first victory. Yeah, no, no bowling pins, no bowling alleys. Paul Dano, you'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is a problem because uh, this is going to be the end of the game. We said very early on that Jan played G takes F6. He played B5. And this feels like a lifetime ago. Yep. He was playing very well, but he lost the thread, and it became a very Magnus Carlsen-esque position. Yep. And here we are. We're about to see the first classical chess victory for Magnus Carlsen in, in a world championship since 2016. We're wrong. He doesn't resign. He makes one more, one I, more move. I think F5 is two. easy enough. Yes. F5 and the knight goes to F6. Or white might just push that pawn forward by force. I think probably white is already in territory where most moves which don't blunder material win. Black screen will go to G1. Magnus uh, has chosen F5. White can play rook to D7 to start with. Or I think probably knight F6 also does the trick. Yeah, knight but F6 it, threatens E7, and there's no way to deal with it. Well, there's a lot of checks, king. so it, it gets a bit concerning. As long as the king the can checks. hide, which I think there's a path. Because there's queen H6 in the end there, but um, what's, what's the most clinical way to do it here? I feel like actually rook to G7 is a very good way of doing it. Because that threatens e7 just as much because it, the rook gets out of the way. Oh, knight, knight oh, seven. That's that's the easiest. That's even nicer. Yeah. He's the highest king on the same idea as the knight on f6 and that it threatens e7, everyone, but this actually keeps the much easier escape route for the king. So, so the king's actually going to go to g8. Yeah. Okay. Because it goes to f6, so it checks in the diagonal, but you're going to go exactly like that, and yep. then that's it. I think boom, this boom, is boom, boom, boom. resign, the moment to resign. Wow. And I mean, for Jan Nepomnesi, this is a brutal moment because in the first five games of the match, he was the one with more chances. Yep. And in this game, he also had his fair share of chances. He was the one who kept the queens on, tried to play, and then the imbalance that he created. And yet here we are, the rook, the knight, the two pawns. That's the end of the story here. One of them, the e pawn, is going to promote. You have to sacrifice your queen for it. That, yep. of course, is losing. And Magnus Carlsen, he's going to shush the doubters. He's put his finger to his lips too early in certain events. And there it is, there's the handshake, and that is Magnus Carlsen taking the three and a half, two and a half lead. The first decisive game in more than five years of classical chess for the World yeah, Chess yeah, Championship. I mean, it's true. 